Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst and Pat McSherry and the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of In-Depth Outdoors. I'm James Holst, and on today's show, we head to Detroit Lakes to fish with Connor Kleist. Now, before we get into today's episode, I want to provide a little bit of an update on what we're facing when we're out there on the ice. Now, as everybody knows, we're in the third week of January now, and really up to this point, we've not experienced any typical weather for this time of year. And by that, I mean, we've spent more time dealing with inconsistent thin ice and even having to fish in rainstorms then we have having to deal with really cold temperatures, but that changes today. And it also coincides with the full moon in January. And the reason I mention that is I think it's really important in that, to me, it signifies that move from early ice patterns into that midwinter lull that a lot of anglers will experience with a variety of species. Now, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna be fishing after dark. That full moon high overhead, it really changes the way fish will behave in clear water fisheries. You'll have good daytime bites leading up to say a week before the full moon, but as you get closer and closer to that full moon date, more and more of your feeding activity starts to take place after the sun sets. That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna show you how to target big crappie after the sun sets today on In-Depth Outdoors. All right, we're gonna do something that we've never tried before. Tonight, we're gonna to take two of the otter crossovers. We're gonna put them together side by side. The thinking is, well, one, it's gonna be dark. We're gonna need lights. Two, it's gonna be really cold. Cameraman's not gonna be able to survive all night long outside. So we need to make room for him. And uh, Connor and I wanna spread out a little bit. So we'll each be in our own house, but we'll be connected. We'll share a common wall. We'll be able to see each other through that, uh, that side panel. Should be pretty cool. You know, you can butt the houses up pretty close. The sides are flat, and then I just picked up to what amounts to chip bag clips. You know, you eat half a bag of chips, and you don't want them to get stale. Roll the bag up, just that kind of clip. And there is not much airspace between it, so this will be kind of a nice little setup for us. Should be able to have a uh, nice, comfortable night out here on the lake. Bottom's loaded with fish. Is it? Yes, it is. They don't look huge. Probably some perch. Well, this is home sweet home. Uh, we've got uh, two of these otter crossovers side by side. This is pretty slick, don't you think? Yes, it is. Nice for a night of fishing. Absolutely. Gives a guy, you know, a little bit more room instead of being right next to his buddy. We're fishing in uh, 25, 26 foot of water here tonight. Um, these fish are gonna actually, the crappies now, are gonna come in pretty shallow. They'll be about 10 feet under the ice, maybe a little deeper, but not much. Definitely not bottom hugging crappies. And uh, chance at a couple walleyes too, believe it or not. So suspended crappies, and uh, it's all after dark. You know, one of the things that we've noticed here is, you know, all the talk on the news has been about the, you know, the big full moon, what do they call it, the blood wolf? Yep big full moon and uh, as we've got closer to that full moon the day bites have been tougher and tougher and uh, everything's starting to switch into that after dark mode well not everything uh, if you're fishing a real stained body of water guess what the fish are still probably gonna eat during the day but on the uh, natural lakes here in Minnesota uh, the clear bodies of water that we have here so much of the prime fishing activities happening after dark now a little perch maybe I got a if crappie. If the perch are still around, oh, it's a little crappie. 
was going to say, if the perch are still around, the predators probably aren't in here. But you got a good one? I don't know about good, but a start for the night. Well, I could say the same about this, but I'd kind of like to. Can I get a mulligan? <laughs> <laughs> I got a little starter I'll as get well. A mulligan. <laughs> yeah, yours is a lot better than mine. I don't know if I'd use better, but. <laughs> it was better, clearly. Size has been run, running real good though, hasn't it? It has. Have you been no noticing the same thing on, on the bites as we get closer and closer to that full moon? Mm -hmm. The daytime bites been getting you know tougher and tougher, shorter windows, and everything's been moving to the night. Yep. And also, I think too, just the January lull. You know, yep. we're midwinter right now, and and fish have seen a lot of pressure and a lot of snow and not a little bit of light coming through. So when that full moon does break through. Those fish are active. You know, you, you got to have uh, that really good early and late bite. Sometimes that, that middle of the winter is just what it is. Yep. You know? Strike Master introduces the new Lithium 40 Volt. Everything you've ever wanted in an ice auger. With a 40% increase in cutting speed over the competition and up to 100 holes per charge, the Lithium 40 Volt has the power and stamina you need and a two amp rapid charger that can bring a fully discharged 40 volt battery pack to a full charge in as little as two and a half hours. The new Lithium 40 Volt, only from Strike Master. Otter, the leader in quality and innovation, is opening doors with the release of the all new Crossover Series Ice Shelters. All crossover shelters convert from traditional front door entry to convenient side door entry and back again in seconds. Otter, the toughest, strongest, smartest, and now most versatile shelter on ice. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. This winter, set a trap for your next trophy with iFish Pro. Ideal for all species, iFish Pro is an innovative fishing system that allows an angler to use their favorite rod and reel instead of trying to manage the fish hand over hand. Oh, right Complete your ice fishing arsenal with iFish Pro, tactical ice gear that puts the fight back into tip up fishing. Look at that. Find oh, iFish Pro go. online at <laughs> iFishPro.com or at your favorite sporting goods retailer. Not bad one. There you go. Heck yeah. Probably the biggest one of the night so far. It is. Sun's still up. It will get bigger. But quality fish anywhere you go, yeah. really. Be, you know, if you're keeping fish to eat, that'd yeah. be the way to go. Yep. But not tonight. Trophy hunting. Trophy hunting. I'm still going to let those go, too. <laughs> Me as well. Going the wrong way, It's feisty, yeah. It doesn't. It's down. <laughs> there Submerge. He goes. Those fish on the bottom, bottom haven't been the uh, most active ones for me. No, nope. I just had a little perch still tugging on me. Really? Give me nightmares. Let's the reason uh, Connor's talking about having little perch nightmares is we started our day out in North Dakota chasing perch. And I tell you, these daytime bites are tough. Um, you know, last week Connor was on a perch bite where it was every day just really nice 11 to 14 inch perch. And that has slowed down. And we spent the day catching nothing but five to eight inch perch as fast as we could go. <laughs> We've had our fill. We just wanted to tug in the, in the line at this point. <laughs> ain't half bad, right? It's like it's getting darker and they're getting more aggressive. Mm -hmm. And a little bigger. And a little bigger. So we're gonna fish till we catch a 14 incher? I'm fine with it. I might have him on here. <laughs> <laughs> Back he goes. Bye-bye. Not your 14 incher. Nope. Nope. You still got me. For now. Well, I know nobody's keeping track, but I think you've got the biggest one so far. <laughs> That's a better one. Oh, yeah. There's a head shake. Oh, my. Oh, my. 
jams. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worthy. <laughs> oh, I hardly had them. Oh, my God. The number three rip and wrap. Oh, my God. Was he up high? Like seven feet under the ice. That is a big crappie, dude. Shaking. <laughs> so cool that he was that shallow. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I mean, we're in 26 feet of water. I mean, the only reason that fish is up there, two feet. So he didn't hesitate, or she, obviously. But just, well, oh. the weight in your hand, it's just a special fish. It's really an awesome is. crappie, man. Boy, that changed things quick, didn't it? Yes. Yes. Got serious. Mm -hmm. I might not spend a whole lot of time fishing those ones on the bottom anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no. Came in by himself, so I mean, work the water column, but mm -hmm. I mean, you never know. And that fish is just passing by, so you got to be quick to reel up on it. And now that was a crappie that could have eaten that shiner. <laughs> yes. No problem. No problem at all. Got him. Well, that was uh, over to a little tumbler spoon in glow pink, and that one. He rushed it twice. First fish to interact with it. Always Come a good on. sign. Come on up. He's nice. no giant. He's respectable. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, I want to catch one of them high riding 15 pluses like you just did. <laughs> nice fish. Things that go bump in the night. Nice coffee. They're thick here. Of course, that one that you just let go, that was a, yeah, that's what you get. <laughs> The average, it's got to average out over mm -hmm. time, right? Mm -hmm. I'll fire you back. Charge up my spoon. Down you go. Yeah, I could really tell that, you know, I had that fresh charged up spoon and that fish, he went and mouthed at it. Mm -hmm. I pulled the bait away from it and he literally went as the spoon was still shooting mm -hmm. up in the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that glow makes a big difference. Very clear water here, so those fish see it from such a long ways away. And the only reason they're really out here is to eat and they're just roaming. So right. gives them something to have a pinpoint and, and work their way to. There he is. A little bit bigger one from underneath. Down low? He was down there about 20. He had a buddy at uh, 19 and I could not get that guy to go. Yeah. And his deeper buddy come up and rushed in and made my day or my evening. Stole it from the big one, I'm sure. No, no, this is actually the bigger one that was down okay. there. For once, it actually worked out for me. <laughs> nice fish, yeah. not a giant. We know they're in here. You've kind of set the bar. Ooh, I'm gonna stop talking now. My flasher is pretty much loaded up here. So, goodbye. And hopefully there's another one. And again, that was another fish that climbed all over it after I had recharged. Shuttle only from Markham Technologies. Okuma Fishing Tackle offers a complete lineup of reels for the die-hard ice angler. The Okuma Samar 10 and Inspira 20 are a perfect match with your favorite panfish or walleye ice fishing rod. Both feature a long stem handle that fits comfortably in a gloved hand. Cyclonic flow rotor technology that throws water off the reel to minimize ice buildup. And a drag system optimized for use in extreme conditions. Everywhere, every day, every fish. Okuma Fishing Tackle is inspired fishing. At Aluma, we make the longest lasting, most dependable enclosed trailers on the road today. By building quality, our competition just can't match. Our all aluminum construction gives you a heavy duty but lightweight trailer that can handle your tough hauls. Aluma trailers are engineered for ease of use with you in mind. All backed by our unbeatable five year warranty. Work or play, get there with Aluma. We're in it for the long haul.
Come on. Maybe. Maybe. Come on, pie. Got him. So here's what you need to take away from that whole interaction there. There's six, eight fish on the screen at any one time. That's a nice fish. That is. And your tendency is, let's just drop that spoon right in that mess of fish. One's gonna eat it, right? It never happens. Keep that spoon above those fish, a foot and a half, two foot uh, at least. And eventually you'll get one that'll just see that spoon dancing up there and just kind of come, come uncorked on it a little bit. But you got to see it there. I mean, uh, don't give in to the, the idea that, oh, I'll just drop it right down in the middle of them and one's gonna eat it. It just doesn't happen. Keep it above their heads and eventually one just decides to eat it. All right, gonna fire that guy back. Pink it is so far, man. Seems to be. Well, right away, you were getting them pretty good on that green UV, that ripping wrap. The rattle has turned off and the, the glow spoon is, is the ticket, it seems. That was my nicest fish so far. Come on. There he is. Starting to dig here a little bit. Decent one? Yeah, I think so. Get him on the transducer here. They love playing that game. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's a nice fish. There we go. That's a nice one. Yeah. I switched over to a glow goldfish spoon. And let me tell you, he took that all the way down the uh, stovepipe there. Whew. Pop him out. He's going to be just fine. Fantastic fish. I'll fire him back. All right. See you later. Oh, gone. And there's more waiting. Thump, head shake. It's gonna be a good one, huh? Yes, it is. Did you get that one on a jig? Tungsten. A tungsten after dark. Finally. <laughs> he stared at it for too long for him not to eat it. That's a, that's a good one. That is. Respectable crappie anywhere you go. You set the bar really high earlier. I, I, it is going to be hard to, <laughs> to top that one. Nice. Where was he in the water column when you picked him up? 10 feet off the bottom. So running right about 17. Seems like a lot of our fish have yep. been sitting in that range. But some high flyers starting to show up too. Yep. Yeesh. Some weight. Maybe, maybe by downsizing. Yeah, it looks pretty good on this Fusion. This Fusion's a tuned up custom. It's uh, one of those feel rods. Very sensitive, very light in the tip. What are you doing, fish? Oh, he's just sitting there. Oh, I got it on the edge of the ice, I think. He's still hooked. It's a nice fish. Here he comes. Not exactly prototype <laughs> how you do that. The way he's hooked there, right on the snoot. One of the barbs, as he was coming up the hole, grabbed the corner of the ice. But stick with it, get the fish up on uh, top side here. Nice fish. All right, we'll fire you back. Join your buddies. In-depth outdoors, spot on the spot ID. On today's spot on the spot ID, we wanna share some concepts, some ideas on how to get yourself set up in a position where you're gonna be able to catch some of these crappies that are out roaming in deeper water during the day and catch them as they start to move tight to structure. Now, I've got a map here of a lake that's really similar to the one that we fished in today's show. And what you notice right away, all this deep blue, uh, this is all deep water. I'll zoom in here just to give you a little bit better look at what we're talking about here. This lake also has a phenomenal crappie population. And when they're suspended and roaming midwinter like they are right now during the day, Imagine under the temps that we fished under in today's episode, trying to whole hop your way around this huge area, trying to find these suspended moving crappies. It can be incredibly difficult to do. So our thought press, uh, process was, instead of really pounding our heads against that brick wall, trying to find these fish during the day, let's get ourselves set up in a position where we can start right before sundown, be in a high percentage area and let those fish come to us. And as you can see in today's video, it actually worked out really well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm using uh, the uh, Lake Master Fish Smart app here. I'm gonna turn on contours. And I've got those contours set in 26 foot of water. That's about the depth range that Connor and I were fishing. And so what you'll notice here, that 26 foot of water 
basically ends up functioning as that break line where you've got shallow structure that drops down to the basin where it starts to flatten out. Now what we were looking for was a really steep break. And just like this example here, these break lines with the really tight uh, contours where it's really dark on the map, that's a real steep area. We start to look all along the shoreline, you'll see that same real rapid drop off the shallows. And what ends up happening there is these schools of crappies. And when I say schools, they're not huge groups of fish. Two, three, four, five fish in like these loose groups are just out here milling around, even at night, and they're feeding. They're feeding on microscopic food uh, uh, organisms, and they're also chasing bait fish. So what we did was we found a really steep bake, uh, uh, break off a piece of structure, set up right at the base of it, and we counted on those actively feeding crappies, those small groups, those little schools, to just mill through the area. We had groups coming from all directions, out from deeper water and from both sides of us. And being in this location really increased our chance of staying on active fish throughout the night. So if you're gonna go out, set yourself up for a night bite on a lake close to you. Keep this idea in mind. Use the natural structure of the given lake that you're fishing to funnel those fish towards you. Do this and you're gonna be a lot more successful out there on the ice. Randall GM in Aiken, Minnesota's only haggle-free Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealer is a proud sponsor of In-Depth Outdoors TV. Our Brandle value price ensures that you don't have to spend your entire day haggling to get a great deal. And every new vehicle comes with our exclusive gimmick-free lifetime powertrain warranty. Whether you're in need of service, sales, parts, or body shop repair, stop by our state-of-the-art facility in Aiken or visit us 24-7 at BrandleGM.com. features not found on any other underwater viewing system, the Quest HD from Markham Technologies offers a vivid 7-inch widescreen display, Sony camera, and the ability to send video to a TV over HDMI in full 1080p. The Quest HD offers on-screen display of direction, temperature, and depth. This season, get your eyes below the ice and see what you've been missing on the big screen with a Quest HD underwater viewing system from Markham Technologies. Hey, hey, did you just throw a minnow down on it? I did. Nice. Yeah. The one thing we haven't done, and it didn't take long. We'll see if uh, it uh, affects the size. That looks like a good one. It does. Nope. Just another. Same, same? That's a nice fish. It is. I mean, you can't complain. <laughs> no. Don't want to talk down to these by any means. Because that's quality crappie anyway. Yes, it is. And a lot of fun to catch. Boop. Not a world record, but nice. Not fish. a world record? It looks like a decent fish. It is. Same, same? Same, same. Just using a little uh, tungsten tubby, or what you got tungsten there? Tungsten tubby. Hook a little crappie minnow. A little crappie minnow, yeah. right. And Old I mean, school. Yeah. I'm not even really checking where it is in the water column either. It's just kind of dropping it down and letting them find the it. Crappies are everywhere. Why not? Yeah, they are. They'll find it. All right, so here's what we've done. Um, he's had some pretty consistent action fishing that little uh, crappie minnow, just on a plain jig. Uh, Tunks and tubby, it's one sixteenth ounce jig, just fishing it on um, a bull whip, just using just kind of that real soft tip dead stick. And uh, instead of just watching him catch fish, I figured I'd punch a hole next to uh, my flasher here so I could throw one down there. And it looks like I got something working on that dead stick right now. Right there, he's got it. Oh, bull whip. That works pretty good. It's kind of interesting to watch that bait as that fish hits it. You know, the crappie minnow is jiggling all of a sudden, it just goes plump. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Boy, we have had a lot of them like that tonight. 
Back you go, fish. Here in the last half hour, any fish that comes in in that 17, 18 foot range, they, they, they eat. Yeah, every single one. They're few and far between right now, but it is nice to see those aggressive fish again. Mm -hmm. Marking a good one. Is it a big one? We're gonna find out. You got yours. Mm-hmm. Nice fish too. Good for you. I thought I was gonna just get crushed. Not no more yet. Oh yeah. Nice. That's a nice fish. Oh, you went back to pink, huh? I did. Good back for you. To flash champ. That nice fish, though. Heck yeah. I mean, we've had six, eight of those tonight, you know, mixed yeah. in with a couple of those really big ones. Yep. Keeps the guy busy, but no, you cannot complain about a fish like <laughs> No. Gorgeous specimen. Get her back. So that brings us to the end of today's show. And let me tell you, I've never been more happy to be sitting inside a heated otter and having those two otter crossovers side by side that actually worked out really nice for Connor and I to each have our own space and still have enough room left over to keep the cameraman happy. So before I go, I want to thank Connor Kleist. He's an amazing young man. I really enjoy fishing with this guy. He works hard. He's a real savvy angler for a guy that's, you know, really pretty young yet. I look for some big things to come from Connor in the very near future. So if you want to connect with Connor, look him up on Facebook. I'm sure he'd be happy to chat with anglers that have got questions to send his way. Now, before we go, I want to remind everybody we're still accepting entries for the Dream Trip giveaway sponsored by Brandel GMC in Aitken, Minnesota. The winner will uh, get a chance to fish and film an episode of In-Depth Outdoors with the crew here. So make sure you get entered to do so. Go to our homepage, indepthoutdoors.com. Look for the Dream Trip giveaway uh, icon there. Click on it, follow the instructions. We're going to be drawing the winner mid-February, so there's still time for you to get entered. So thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.